Hello and welcome. I just wanted to say thank you for letting me join uh, your small group today as we continue on in our series, Empty. And this past weekend, as you know, we kind of unpacked uh, the verse that talks about the feeding of the 5,000. I mean, here you have this one little boy, uh, and he's walking around. He has a couple of fish, a couple of loaves of bread, and the disciples, they find him, and they realize they need to feed 5,000 people, right? And, and how are they going to do that? And how, how, do you, how do you feed that large of a group of people? And so they take the fish, they take the bread, and, and as we know, they spread it all around, and, and there's probably actually probably fifteen or 20,000 people there because of all the wives and, and children that are there with them. And the Bible says that there's still excess food left over when everyone had eaten. And we hear a story like that, and it's like, wow, how does that happen? And obviously, we know it's a miracle that, that God did, but we see a little boy who was just willing to give what he had. A few years ago, I read a story about a, a, a servant who was in Africa, and he had a master, and his job every day was to take two water pots up a hill and to take them to his master's house. And after about a year of doing this, uh, he was getting tired, and, and uh, he was looking at his different pots, and he realized that one of his pots had developed a crack in it. And so he noticed that each day that he continued to go, a little bit less water would actually get there in one of the pots. And after a year and a half, he's like, you know, I really should do something about this, but he didn't have any money, he didn't have any way to, to fix his pot, and, and so he just kind of continued to go up the same path day in, day out, but the longer he did it, the guiltier well, he felt about it. And so finally, after about two years, he went to his master, and he said, you know, I feel like I'm not giving you everything that you're paying me to do. And his master said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I have this stick that goes across my back. I have the two pots, and every day, one of the pots, it brings you a full pot of water. He said, but my other pot, I don't know if you know this or not, but it has a crack in it, and so you're only getting about half the water that you're actually paying me for. And the master looked at him and thought about it for a second, and he said, I, I want to show you something. He said, I realized that obviously that one of the pots was not getting all the water. And I started thinking, well, what's going on with that? He said, and I watched you. I watched you come up the hill. I watched you bring me the water. And I realized that something was going on with one of the pots. And I knew I had a choice. I could get mad at you. I could fire you. Or I could fix your pot. Or I could do something that you wouldn't even know that I was doing. A little baffled, the servant, he looked at him. He said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, let's go walk outside, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. He said, show me where you walk down the hill every day. He said, I go down this path right here. He said, exactly. He said, what do you see along the path? He said, I just see an open road. I don't see anything. He said, what side of the road do you walk up the hill on? He said, well, this side over here. He said, what do you see? He said, well, I see rock, and I see a whole lot of flowers on the side of the road. He said, exactly. He said, I realized about a year into this thing that I wasn't getting all the water I was supposed to get. And what was I going to do about it? He said, and I realized that obviously it was leaking out. He said, so I went and I got some seed, and I planted some wildflowers all the way down the hill. And every day for the past year, we've enjoyed wonderful flowers at our dinner table that you provided for us. You had no idea that by your pot leaking, you actually were watering, well, you were watering my plants. And actually today, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for watering my plants. We've enjoyed the flowers more than you can ever imagine, even more so then we enjoyed the water. You know, that's kind of how it is with us sometimes. There are times that we don't even realize what we're doing, but we're doing something maybe for somebody else or maybe even for God. You see, God, what he really wants is just for us to be willing to say, I'll do whatever it is that you desire for me to do. This servant was just walking up a hill every day getting paid, thinking he was actually cheating somebody when actually he was providing something for them that they never knew they were even going to get. That's what God wants from us. He wants us to be willing to serve him, willing and available to do whatever it is that he is asking us to do. It reminds me of a verse in the book of John, 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 10. It says this, it says, this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. You see, God wants to complete his love through you and through me. He wants our hearts to be open to do whatever it is, just like the boy was, who said, I'll give you my fish, I'll give you my loaves of bread. 
So today I want to ask some questions. One question is this, what are you doing with what God has given to you? What are you open to allow God to do in your heart and in your life? Is the love of God coming out of you to other people? You see, every single one of us have to decide every day, are we going to be willing to do, the, to do the things that God desires for us to do? Or are we going to hold things back and actually hold God back from doing something in and through us? The master, he could have fired his servant for not giving him everything, but he chose a different way. He chose to allow him to supply something that he didn't even know he was supplying. That's just the way that God wants to work in your life and in mine. So I wonder, as a small group, how are you doing in this area? Are you showing the love of God as a small group? You see, there are lots of different avenues that we can show love as a group. One way is to show love internally. We pray for one another. We pray for each other's family. We care for one another. Maybe we supply something for someone. That's a great way to do that. Another thing we ought to do as a group is, is how can we reach out to our community? I mean, is there somebody else who needs a group? Is there somebody else who, who needs maybe some physical things? Is there someone that we can bless as a group? You know, as a church, one of the things that we're really striving and going after hard this year is something we're calling Community Connect. It's something that we're doing at our Highland and our Los Lunas campus. It's where we go and we actually be the hands and feet of Jesus. Many of you are bringing in different things on the weekend, whether it's food or clothes or whatever that looks like to supply a meal, or maybe supply some clothes for somebody who they wouldn't have any clothes, they wouldn't have any food without that. As a small group, something we want to challenge you with this summer is, is, is how can you get more involved in that? I know as a group leader, I'm always looking for different ways that, that we can get our group plugged into the community and not just focused inwardly, but how do we focus outwardly? Community Connect is a great way to do that. On our different campuses, on Los Lunas campus, the first and third weekend of every month, we actually have trailers that come to the campus, and they supply food, and they also supply clothes for different people who are looking for some of those things. On the second and fourth weekends of the month, we have that at our Highland campus. We have a need for volunteers to help with that. One of the needs is just to show up there on the campus at that weekend from about 11.15 to 1.15, help set everything up, and then to distribute the items that people are needing. Something else that we have a need for for small groups to do that's not on the weekend, it can be done any time is, is, that, is to actually go and promote in the different neighborhoods about Community Connect. If people don't know about it, uh, they can actually enjoy the blessing of it. And so you can actually go to your one place counter on your campus and you can grab a little bag that, that talks about how to, how to be involved in Community Connect. It gives you some flyers you can go hand out, knock on doors, let people know that we're going to be in those areas of town and where to meet exactly. You just have to stop by one place to pick up one of those packets. Something else you can do is here on the Riverside campus, every Wednesday from 9 to noon, we actually sort all the different items that come in, all the food, all the clothes. And this is something you can come in and do from 9 to noon every Wednesday. Our desire as a church is, is to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Just like this little boy who said, hey, I just have a fish. I just have a few loaves of bread. I don't have a whole lot to give, but I'm going to give what God has given to me. What will you do as a group? Go ahead and take some time out to discuss some of the questions that will be on the DVD.